Hello and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 for part 2 of this week's update where I'm going to have a look into what other people have been doing around the, around the solar system while I've been messing around with the Naquium. So the first thing on my list is over here in Norvis orbit, where I'm going to, be, where uh, Tristan's been putting together the deep space probes, and this is one of the things that you need for uh, for deep space science one. Similarly to some of the later astro and energy sciences, where you had to go off and do scanning from either in an asteroid belt or from in orbit around the sun, this uh, for deep space science one, you need to go off and do get interstellar void probe data. And so this this works in exactly the same way. You launch a probe rocket out from um, from somewhere in, in in the interstellar void, and it collects a load of data for you. And that's one that can only be made this way. As you can see, there's the, if I, even if I click on this, it doesn't show me an actual recipe for it because it's a, its own special thing, unlike all of the other ones which are made from doing something to Naquium or, or whatever. They're sort of more normal recipes. And so, Tristan has set up a system over here. This is where we're making the solar probe data and the asteroid uh, belt data. So those are both coming out of here and being sent over to wherever they're needed for their appropriate sciences. But for this one, we've got the uh, the probes being uh, the, being made over here. And these are kind of expensive. They, uh, they they follow a similar design to the other probes. So where over here, you can see it requires a load of blank data cards, heat shields, fuel, and, and so on. Over here, it's a similar sort of idea. You've got the data cards and you've got the fuel. But this time, we need some nanomaterials, some rocket control units, uranium fuel cells, and apparently laser turrets to make them. Uh, so these are all being brought over and now by on the belts, and a lot of these were already here. So we, we already had the um, the uranium fuel cells, as you can see, they're being split off here by the splitter, and the same with the, the memory cards and the rocket fuel. Though, those are fairly easy, and even the rocket control modules here. They're, they're, it's a little bit torturous with the uh, with, with the belt spaghetti here, but they are being brought out and brought over to where they're needed in order to make these probes. It has needed a couple of new extra things, however. The uh, the laser turrets, I believe, are just being brought in on the uh, probe train, which comes up to comes up to here, drops off all the stuff that's required. Um, he doesn't seem to have an automatic trigger for when it runs out of one of the things set up for the probe data. Uh, in fact, looking up here, I think I don't think we have an automatic trigger set for this train. So this one will just come up when it feels like it's a good idea, not when it notices that any one of the things has run out completely. Slightly separately, we also have the uh, nanomaterial that's being brought in by a separate train. So we have a nanomaterial drop station there because that's being made over here on the other side of the uh, in, in the in the deep space science area. We're making a load of nanomaterial here. In fact, I think this is more is this more machines than I put in. No, no. This is the number. Of, this is all the. This is the machines I put in myself. So uh, it hasn't needed expanding, but there's a, there's a supply of nano material here, which the trains can pick up and then bring over to wherever it's needed. And at the moment, the only place it's needed is for the deep space science probe. So it's being brought in over here, put onto the bus, and uh, and, and and made appropriately. Now the next step of this is, is uh, quite clever. So when the tra when the train comes over here, it's set to pick up five probe rockets and five probes that will get put into the train, and that's all the train needs. When once it's got those, it will then head over here to the spaceport where it will park over here uh, by, the, with the, by the Stardust chip. And there is a special train, and because Stardust isn't outputting any miscellaneous junk, everything everything just goes into Stardust and is never seen again. The only thing that comes out from there is, is the uh, is the, is the Naquium, uh, or at least the crushed Naquium, which then may or may not get turned into Naquium ingots. I'm not quite sure about exactly how this is going to work, but that feels wrong. Um, I suspect we're not going to be bringing Naquium out here, Naquium ingots out here. It'll be the, it'll be, they'll be coming out here instead. But anyway, the point stands that this spaceship will land here with, uh, with with the data cards on it and probably nothing else. And then so over here we can feed out the data cards, they'll be brought up here and then put into this this train over here. Now at the moment the train is going to Deep Space Science Probe pick up until it's got five probe rockets and five probes, which it'll then bring over here until it's unloaded them, and it's picked up the 5,000 interstellar void probe data that will be brought back. There is an emergency system here that will pull any any other junk that comes out of Deep, uh, deep Space over, over here to be put into the uh, into the system up here, just in, just in case of an emergency, just in case anything Thing does accidentally get put in but it shouldn't be bringing anything else back so those will be unloaded they'll be put into the train and then the train at the moment doesn't have anywhere to take them we need we will need to add in an additional station so I, I'm gonna stick this, I should probably stick this over to manual just because otherwise when they when that uh, when those data cards arrive the train would leave and go back and go and get some more probes which isn't what we want at this point but once it's got those we will event eventually tell it to come over to here where the deep space science is going to be done it can unload here and those can be put into making some catalogs and so at the other end we have the spaceship that comes out to uh, to Stardust, where it can uh, it can stop here, it can unload its deep space science probes and its uh, probe rockets, which come down down this belt here. There they're being filtered out of the out out of the warehouse here, so they'll come down this belt, round here, 
and then go up and be put into this into this silo here, which will then launch those probe rockets and and, and then eventually uh, turn them into. In fact, it's got some. Yes, there we go. It's got some probes and it's got some rockets there. So at the moment, it is building a rocket, uh, and it will it will then once that's been built, it will then launch the rocket. All the data will come out going th through these warehouses and then end up in these warehouses here, and these will then take it all the way back over to Norbit, where it can then be passed over and, and, and on into the in, into the system over there and. and uh, and turned into science. Oh, and there is the uh, there is the probe rocket. It's, it's, it's been finished, so the rocket the rocket is emerging, ready to be fired out and to go and get the data. So we'll we'll, we'll see that happen. But yes, well that, that they, then all those data cards get unloaded, it put into the spaceship, and then the next time the spaceship leaves, it can fly off. It can then um, it can then drop them off in orbit to be turned into other data. Meanwhile, as the ship has arrived, I, I touched on this in the last video a little bit, but we can see that the uh, the sulfur is now pouring out over here. And being turned into uh, being turned into acid, and that is using up some of the water down here. So we're now down to a mere hundred thousand water, and that's being kept topped up appropriately. But that means we've got enough acid pouring out up here. I don't know why this train has stopped. That's very strange. I'll have to look into that in the next stream because this train should not have stopped here because it is. Uh, have I messed up with the signals? Maybe there's no signal along. I th yeah, I think I messed up with the signals. We put put signals in a lot. Yeah, we need to we need to have some signals along here because otherwise this block here. Is it actually? Uh, no, it should it should still be able to come in because there's a signal there. Or is that a goat? No, that's that's very strange. I don't understand why the train isn't isn't moving forward at this point. Um, there is a, a bit of a potential problem because this one will be will be occupying the block that comes all the way around here. But this train should still be able to pull forward at, along to here and unload the naquium. So I'm not quite sure why that's failed. Uh, but we'll look at that later. I'm not I'm not going to worry about it too much right now. As a minor aside, while I'm staring at the spaceship, I also added in an extra fuel tank along here, because it turns out that um, four of these tanks is enough for the spaceship to take off one fewer times than it has to in order to do its full round trip. So previously, the spaceship got stuck in Talos orbit because these tanks didn't have enough uh, fuel left for it to lift off from there. Uh, so I've stuck in an extra one because it was only just under what it needed to have, and that should now be enough. It should now be able to do the full round trip. Um, if it doesn't, we're going to have some problems because we're going to need to squeeze another another ion booster tank in somewhere, and I'm not quite sure how that where that's going to fit. Uh, this spaceship is already kind of full. Um, I guess the answer would be we'll make it a little bit wider down here at the bottom, and, and, and but that messes up messes up all the ships being exactly the same same shape, and that feels like it would be a shame. Meanwhile, Mike has been very busy in uh, orbit over Andragon, uh, Andragorbit, I guess, and whatever we're going to whatever we're going to call this one. So you can see his, his ship's down over here. He has finished doing the defences, so we now have a decent complement of, um, of of meteor defence guns. We have an umbrella defence, and all of this, everything around here is set up nicely. We're doing the battery charging down here. We've got got a loop for the train to go around, and it's unloading all kinds of miscellaneous stuff into the warehouse here, where it can then be uh, put into this, loaded up into the warehouses to go into the ship to be taken away to Norbit. All this is coming up from the planet down on the ground, where he set up a couple of core miners. So there's there's um, maybe, more, maybe more than a couple. One, uh, what, two, three. And there is a fourth one up here that for some reason isn't connected in. So I think we should probably just do that and that and just then, then feed those in. Because otherwise, you're losing all of the speed you, um, that you lose from having too many core mining drills without getting the bonus of actually getting, you know, the stuff out of them. So that'll look Give us, given us an extra 50% on the uh, on the core chunks coming through. Those are flowing along here, they're getting pulverised down, and this is a stone planet, so uh, all these core chunks are going in, and they're being turned into stone and vanilla core chunks. The vanilla core chunks are being then brought over to here, where they're being turned into more stone, and some miscellaneous other stuff that we don't care about quite so much. And so this is producing enormous amounts of stone for us, as you can see, flowing down the, flowing down the belts over here. And that's all going into a warehouse here, where, and, and then into the train, so we're getting mostly stone through, which is what we want. The reason we came out to Andragon is because we are short of stone. But um, Mike decided it would be fun, because this is quite a small planet, to try and harvest absolutely everything, literally 100% of absolutely everything that there is on this planet. So he's going to go after this uh, this raw emersite here, and these rare metals, and this stone, and this copper, and that tiny amount of cryonite tucked in there in the middle, and this vitamelange over here, and so on and so on. And so his first step towards that is this mine here, which is a, a mostly iron ore mine, but a little bit of vitamelange as well. So the, as you can see, the drills are digging up. Well, there's a bit of each coming out. There's quite a lot of iron, but there's a little bit of a little bit of vitamelange coming out. And he's put in quite a clever system along here for making sure because we don't want to just have shipments of massive quantities of iron ore coming in because that's Oliran's job. Uh, we want to get mostly stone, but it would be quite nice to allow a bit of the stuff from these on, other ones to come through as well. And so he's put in this system here, which watches, monitors what's on the train, because we're reading, we've got the station over here that is reading train contents, and when the train has 
more than 6,000 uh, stone on it, you go, okay, the train is 60% full of stone, let's put, let's let some other stuff through as well. And so when it, when it gets to that point, then it'll start pouring, in this case, mostly iron, but with a little bit of copper and a little bit of, and a bit of vitamin lounge through as well. So you, if we look over here, we can see this train has currently 5,100 stone, but when that gets up to, uh, up to 6,000, as I say, we'll then start pulling through here. And there's still going to be a lot of stone flowing into the train at that point. So we're not going to end up with a train that is just 60% stone. It's going to be 60% stone, and there's going to be the byproducts of the core mining, so all of this stuff coming through. But then there's also going to be the, uh, but then also once it's got to that 60%, we're then going to get a little bit of this extra stuff as well. So it's going to take a long, long time at this rate to uh, to pull up, well, even even this patch alone, because there is still um, 121,000 iron here, and there are many others with many, many more things that will need to be passed through. But it'll get there eventually, and we'll have a nice healthy supply of all kinds of things, and maybe an eventually a completely empty planet over here, which would be entertaining, I have to admit. Mike also decided that the best way to attack this planet would be to just land his spaceship on it right in front of a biter nest and use the and use the laser guns on the front of the spaceship that are meant to defend against um, against meteor strikes to to take out the biter. So that happened around here, and I'll show you some footage of this happening because it was um in fact it was quite entertaining and it it sort of worked except he parked a little bit too far away and that meant there was a behemoth biter that um, was 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 outranging his laser turrets and doing more a bit more damage to his ship than it was doing than the ship was doing to them. Uh, then he went over and decided it'd be a good idea. Idea to try and nuke it, but he put the nuke in the wrong place and did and, and destroyed the front of his ship. And it was it was a bit of a, a comedy, a comedy of um, of, of uh, shenanigans. And then a little while later, he got killed by a biter and had to borrow my ship in order to get back over here again. Fortunately, he didn't damage that one; otherwise, I'd have been very cross with him. Um, and I've, I've now got it back, and it's working quite nicely. But uh, yes, there was a a little bit of a, a, a kerfuffle of trying trying to take over this planet. Uh, this is all because we reckoned it was small enough that there was no point in using a plague rocket on it. Might as well just go in and try and uh, try and deal with everything the old-fashioned way with uh, personal laser defences and machine gun rounds and uh, a few nukes here and there as well. I have to admit, I do like the idea of dropping down in an assault ship to attack a planet. Uh, it feels somehow more satisfying than using the uh, using the, the the energy beams or anything like that. But I think our generic normal ships aren't really designed for assaulting planets like that. We should probably build a combat-focused one that has a little cluster of um, artilleries in the middle of it and then lasers all the way around the outside for several la layers thick uh, and is much more capable of defending itself. But that's something to try in the future, I suspect. There is a minor side note on this planet that uh, due to a lack of, um, due, to, due to not having any offshore pumps or presumably the bits and pieces in order to, to make one, uh, there is not currently enough water coming through to keep these greenhouses running and that means there's not enough wood coming through to make the charcoal, to make the steel, to make the barrels, to take away all of the, all the liquids along here. And so we have a bit of an excess, well there's a little bit of an excess of oil, uh, there's not too much mineral water or pyroflux, so those seem to be kept staying a bit lower, but the oil, crude oil in particular, it's got up to 28,000 so far, so I mean, we're a bit more than, we're like almost 15% full, um, so, but I think the mic is going to easily be able to solve that problem in time for it to, in, in time for it to not really be an actual problem. Uh, you can see over here he's making plenty of iron, so it's just it's just the wood stage. So once once he gets an offshore pump in on this lake down here, I guess pumps the water up into the, into these greenhouses. He'll have loads of wood and will very very quickly empty all of these tanks across here. But at the moment, yeah, there's a bit of a shortage of water. The only water is the, is that that comes out of the uh, the core mining, and it turns out that the amount of water you produce from core processing is not enough to make enough wood to deal with the other um, outputs from the core processing. Uh, but it's a nice easy one to fix. We we know what the problem is. It's not going to take him too long to sort that one out. <laughs> and so you won't be surprised to know that the ship flies from Andragon out to uh, Norvis orbit, but when then when it arrives, it'll park here, and then we can then unload as normal. Goes into the warehouses up here, and this, as you can see, we've got a, we've got a stone warehouse here, and we've got a miscellaneous warehouse over here. And this works in exactly the same way as every other ship. The only slight difference is that the um, the, the thing we want, TM, here is stone, and so the stone isn't in the miscellaneous junk uh, side over here, and that's so they're getting taken away separately. And that is because as Tristan has now got it set up, we can have it have a train go from here. I wonder, I wonder if it's this one. Yes, it is indeed. So this is the one that comes out to get the stone from Andragon. Uh, picks it up like this, and it'll then bimble over here. It'll go down the secondary elevator and drop the stone off here, where it can be passed over to a ground train, which will then pick it up, as it's doing at the moment, and take it off to wherever it's needed on the ground. And from looking at the numbers, I believe we are gradually catching up. And th this warehouse is, is very, very full. Uh, and this train appears to not need to go anywhere. Yeah, so it looks like we're now at the point where we have caught up with the stone supply. So, for example, over 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 here we have the stone being accumulated from the core processing. Uh, there's 
a decent amount there. It's getting into a train. When this train's loaded, it'll probably it'll probably leave. But there are there are various places that use the stone. But apparently, it seems like they've probably all caught up by now. So, for example, here we are outputting massive quantities of stone to turn it into bricks to make the bricks that are then brought down here to be turned into circuits. But the circuits are all caught up. Those are fine. So this seems to be all right. We are we are loading a train up, but it's presumably well. It's, we'll see. See if it leaves immediately when it's full. No, it is now it is now fine, so it is, it's happy to sit there. Uh, we have actually just used up all of that stone, but that means another train will come over. It doesn't matter that this warehouse is empty, because all the other one, because there is a sufficient supply of everything, of, of the stone, of the concrete, of the improved concrete, and so on, all over here. This seems to be all right. Now, granted, the train has just departed with, with, with that load of bricks, but I'm confident, or at least reasonably confident, that we'll have another train load of stone turn up before uh, before it becomes a problem, and before we have an actual shortage. Um, we, we shall see, though. Tristan says the stone is also being taken off to the heat shield tile construction, which is up here. Um, and that, I mean, that seems to be fine. We have a train that has filled up, it's got destination full, so that that has caught up. We have, I mean, we are making the heat shield tiles at the moment, so this, the amount of stone available here is going down. But the fact that we have a full train here makes me think that we're probably actually okay at this point. And it's just sort of, it's just filling the buffer up over here. So you can see that this is actually, this is now completely full. We have more heat shield tiles than we know what to do with. This production facility is going to shut down quite soon. And yeah, we, we have enough. This is this is going well. We're just, we're just letting these belts along here fill up and then we'll be, then, then everything will be absolutely happy. Also down on Norvis, I noticed that the um, the military science wasn't being well. I mean, it was it was being made nice and quickly. I think we were just about keeping up. But I noticed this belt along here. When a train came in, it was it was struggling. It, it, it felt like it wasn't really keeping up. And I think it, I think it did have enough time between uh, trains to fill to fill the buffer back up again. But just in order to make it run a little bit more nicely, look a little bit better, I've upgraded this belt here to a red one. So that's now going twice as fast as it was before. Um, I believe the machines up here can easily keep up with that. So that's absolutely fine. It. I probably didn't need to make that change, but you know, it felt like it felt like it, it, it looked it looks better like this, so I wanted to do it anyway, even though it wasn't really needed. Up in Norbit, Tristan had some concerns about the advanced tech cards. They didn't seem to be being made quite as quickly as they were being used, but he reckoned that it was just an Immersite problem, and it looks like he's right. Now we have a nice supply of Immersite plates available here. We've got plenty of the cogs, and it's completely caught up, so it looks like that is actually, that, that's working nicely. And that's good to see. I mean, I know we, we, we do seem to have varied issues with the Immersite supply. It, it sort of sometimes it sometimes there's plenty of one, sometimes there's plenty of the other. It just goes back and forth somewhat it seems to have a mind of its own, basically. So at the moment we have um, about 9,000 Immersite crystals, 15,000 plates in there, and another 10,000 in there, and another 10,000 in there. So we've got loads of plates. We're a little bit, maybe a little bit low on crystals. Does this count as low? I'm, I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Um, but it seems, to, it seems to be hanging on better than the Immersite usually is when I go and look at it. So yeah, I think that's probably going to be okay. And with the researches we've been doing recently, we've been doing, in, in, in the interests of completionism, we've been doing a lot of the researches we've ignored, specifically some of the rocket reusability ones. And that's been ripping through enormous quantities of the tier one astro science. So Tristan's come along here and put some speed modules in here to make this run a bit faster. He then needed to put additional um, inserters in around here as well, because we were, weren't getting enough, um, uh, we weren't able to put the beryllium in fast enough, because this, these are really, really greedy. The recipe requires 20 beryllium plates for each one it makes. And with a five second crafting time, Time and a machine running at uh, four times, uh, yeah, almost five times speed. Uh, that meant that they, the um, there was about a second for the for, for the insert for the one inserter down here to insert uh, twenty beryllium plates and uh, and at least one significant data. And so, and it just straight up, it couldn't keep up with that. So he's uh, he's put in some more inserters around here to get the uh, get the uh, beryllium plates passed in a little bit more quickly. Maybe in theory, this machine should have been right next to them so we could have done direct insertions. But I think. I, I, I like I like the layout of this. It feels quite nice, and I don't think there's really room to squeeze this in next to all three of these machines. So I don't I don't feel too bad about uh, about having designed it the way I did. And yeah, that is as you can see, we now have plenty of uh, plenty of Astro One. Now at least part that's at least partly because we're not doing any research at the moment. But you know, it it, it shows that it's it, it it seems to be fixed. It's it's kind of working, I think, at this point. <laughs> Oh, he's also beaconed the whole area as well down here, so there's now a speed beacon that's affecting all of the Astro 1, Astro 2, and one of the Astro 3s as well, um, as well as picking up this, uh, this, this, this manufactory here with making the brilliant plates, so it's probably, that's, de that's definitely going to be a good thing. I think the limiting factor now on this is, is this belt. So if we wanted to make them any faster, we'd have to find some way of topping the belt up somewhere around or hit round here, or perhaps bringing another belt out from here, down across here, and, in, in, and, and, um, and having it stop here, 
so that we could load in from, with this inserter and maybe maybe get rid of this this box and so on here and have another inserter on the other side here from, from a, a second belt coming down. But this system is now easily fast enough. I think we're not going to we're not we're not going to poke it anymore because we don't really need to. <laughs> Tristan has also done upgrades for all of the modules uh, involved in creating the Vitalik Extract um, because apparently we had we were, we were running a bit short on it. I guess it's, it's used in huge quantities, I guess, because we're making a lot of the modules we're, we're trying to make. Um, because making productivity modules uses enormous amounts of all of the Vita products in order to make the various different tiers of them. And so be in, because we're trying to because we're struggling to make various things, including um, Naquium, we're wanting to use very, very high tier productivity modules, and that means we need massive quantities of uh, Vita everythings. And so in order to get more Vita extract, we've upgraded the modules in over here. And it's a little bit of a loop, a little bit of a circular thing here, in that we're spending lots and lots of Vitalik extract and other Vita products in order to make the modules to make the Vitalik extract more quickly. But in the long run, it's very, very worth it because we'll be getting a lot more of what we need out of, out of the system. And so these are all now tier 6 modules all the way around here, and tier 6 speed modules in the beacon in the middle as well. And so that should drastically increase the rate that it's being produced at, and it seems to have worked. We do now, in fact, have a completely full warehouse here, and lots and lots, and, and all these bells, and the machines have basically stopped running because we've made so much of it, and we apparently don't need very much at the moment. I think we're going to need to pull through a lot of the um, a lot of the Vita products here into the train at some point because we need a lot of them for the Naquium processing and from and as I say for making the modules. So I suspect we're going to see a lot more throughput over here at some point in the in the quite near future, especially for the Vitalic acid barrels because that's the one that I think I think I broke last time. So we'll need to need to try and get that one fixed due to you know clumsiness and stuff like that. I've also continued with Project Demolish the Old Blue Circuit Factory. Um, not, not a, I haven't done a great deal. I think I grabbed a, a train load of acid and a, tra a train load of, um, of, of rare metals and then sent the train back over here. So at this rate, I'll probably have just about finished demolishing it by the end of the year. Uh, probably. No promises there. <laughs> and over in Kothar Orbit, Mike has redone the, uh, the tra train battery recharging and reloading and re everything -ing 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 system, supposedly, in order to make sure that he doesn't have any more uh, problems with the trains running out of batteries. That said, I don't see anywhere down for this train that's take, taking the uh, the dead batteries out. That said, that said, there aren't any dead batteries in it, so they must be going somewhere, otherwise it would have filled up with them. So I'm not quite sure how this works, because I can see, yes, there's a nice healthy supply of them being brought in down here, but I don't know where the dead ones are being taken out. And there's, there's two in that one. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know how he's, how he's doing this, but this, this looks... Um, th this one up here looks fine. It's unloading the it's unloading the flat batteries here, bringing them over up here to be recharged. Uh, the dead ones are dis disposed of. The the charged ones are brought round here, and I mean they're not really being prioritised on the input here. But it's pr this feels a bit problematic actually. Maybe I'm being a bit too kind because it doesn't. I'm I'm not quite sure that it is going to work. So there we go. There's the batteries getting charged up. I think it it is working at the moment, but only because he hasn't had any more batteries dropped off. Um, so yeah, this is. I think I'm just going to call this problematic and um, and flag it up as something to be to be looked at. And, uh, and maybe 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 he's done something I didn't realise. But it looks like it looks like there's a couple of things here that could quite easily go wrong. Um, I'm going to, I'm, but I'm just going to leave that one for uh, Mike, Mike to work out. We do have a train that has run out of fuel, but that's out on Stardust. Oh, maybe that's the one that's not going anywhere, and that's why it was uh, wasn't moving. Okay, I'll, I'll, that that'll be easy enough to check out then. And so I think that brings us on to the death counters. As I mentioned earlier, Mike had a bit of an oopsie while trying to clear out Andrigan, uh, and he got taken out by a biter, uh, which is, I mean, but the biters are fairly dangerous, they're the hard ones to kill. Normally, I, I, th I think it's usually spitters or worms that get me, but apparently, but nope, this is a biter, and this has, interestingly, brought biters up to having managed as many kills as worms have now, so they're, they're, they're even, uh, and Mike is still clearly way out in the lead on the number of deaths, so uh, well done there. As for researchers, well, as I was saying earlier, we're we're sort of we're just f filling in time at the moment, trying to trying to do as much trying to do whatever research is available while we wait for uh, some, some, a certain somebody to get the anaquium up and flowing so we can start on the deep space sciences. Uh, so in the meantime, we, it's sort of it's a case of let's let's just clean out some of all of these these ones over here and try and do every, every non-infinite research we can. So, for example, the swarm safety, uh, zone discovery rocket cargo safety, uh, rocket survivability, these are all infinite researches now, you can tell because there's an inf infinity symbol on, on, on them next and there, so you have to, as long as you've done at least four cargo safeties, you've, you've got to the infinite researches on that one. Same with survivability, as long as you've got to four, you've done all the non, then it just goes infinite and it's, it's the same thing again and again. However, there's still some reusability left to do, uh, there's still potentially some uh, follower robot count, artillery, yada yada yada. And so, working towards trying to get all of the non-infinite researches done, we've completed physical projectile damage 12, which uh, uses 
lots and lots of science, including including the military one, as I was talking about earlier. Uh, so it gets through, gets through lots of those, 23,000 of them, in fact. And that has unlocked number number 13 as well, which is basically the same idea. But that requires deep space science. So we've got as far on this train as we can at the moment. We're not, not going to get any further with that one. And we've also done rocket reusabilities. We've done 9 to 15, which implies we've done 1 to 8 beforehand in, sometime in the past. And I don't remember doing that, and I'm not sure why we did it, given that we haven't really been using rockets very much. But apparently we had, and so now we've done from 9 to 15. Well, 15 was still running during the during the stream. It's it's finished while I've been faffing around making videos and things. Uh, so yeah, we've done a load we've done a load of rocket reusability. Uh, this means that whenever you launch a rocket, you get more parts back than you would have done before. Uh, it doesn't really matter because I don't think we're going to launch any more cargo rockets. But as I said, we'd we'd like to sort of try and be reasonably completionist, which means we need to do all the way up to 20 of the rocket reusability, and I don't know how many more stronger explosives. But we and 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 so on and so on. Um, but at least we've finished off these two, and I think that's going to keep our science systems busy for the uh, for the for the foreseeable future while we try and get on with uh, getting the Nacrium up and running and then and, and have something new and a bit more exciting to research. And so that's what we're going to be getting up to on Thursday. So come along and join the stream there where I shall be uh, trying to finish off the Nacrium, finishing all the problems I was talking about in the last video. And in the meantime, everyone else will be carrying on with um, all, all, of the, all of the associated bits and pieces as well. Um, I'm not sure what everyone else's plans are, but we'll, uh, we'll, f we'll find out on Thursday. I'll be around on Tuesday as well when I should be playing some more Satisfactory. Uh, I'm still sort of, I've got the oil processing kind of working, but I've got a load of byproducts that I don't really know what to do with. And I'm debating whether I should go in and rebuild huge amounts of stuff, but I don't really want to. And I've been advised that maybe wait until I've got another, a little bit further on before I start doing things like that. So we'll, we'll, we, we shall see. On Wednesday, there will be a uh, an update to the uh, interplanetary logistics video coming out that talks about all of the stuff in 0.8. So there's been some recipe changes. There's been the space elevators added. So there's some new stuff in there. It's going to be it's, it's a little bit slightly longer video, but it goes into a quite uh, some, a good amount of detail about the sort of comparing the the, the, the uh, four different methods of getting things around. What well, four and a half methods uh, and the different costs between them. And, and it, gives, it should give you a nice idea of uh, of which ones are worth concentrating on and and when I think it's worth switching between them. Finally, I will of course be back on Saturday and Monday with another update about what went happened in, in next week's stream, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any of that, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.